Okay, I've had some requests for some more information on Photoshop Actions. Um, basically, you can usually find your Photoshop um, Actions in one of your side tabs. You can just click on it and open it up, and there may not be all of these in here. Um, if you click the little arrow, go down to Load Actions, you'll find your Actions in a folder down there. Okay, in this case, um, I've actually loaded all of the folders that come with Photoshop that aren't usually installed, just so that I can give you some examples here. For example, if I wanted to do an image effect, I can click on, let's say, Oil Pastel, and then I click down here on the Play button, it's like a VCR, and your picture will actually get this different Oil Pastel look. You can see how it looks like it's been painted now. I'm going to go File Revert, because you can't just simply undo, because what a action is, is a series of steps. It's like a macro. So instead of just undoing this action, you just have to revert back to your last saved image. So make sure you save it before you start running on actions. Um, so another example, let's say you have a, a picture that you want to be sepia tone. You click that, click the play button, and your picture becomes sepia tone. You can combine these, like I can now run an oil pastel. Okay, then I can run a soft focus. Now you'll see also some of these areas don't work if you do multiple because you see over here what it's done is it's already converted a bunch of my stuff and if I flatten my image here so that I'm just working with one layer and then go back into my soft focus I get a nicer image there. Okay, I'm going to go file revert and that takes me back again to the last saved image. Now one of the other things that's great about this is here for example I have tons of these things that I've downloaded off the internet and actions are tiny. You can see here that this one's only 4K, this one you know is 8K. All they are is little macros. There's nothing really um, involved in the download other than some text. And then all you have to do to load these, for example I did a search for free Photoshop actions and I came up with about.com and here's bumpy and shiny and grunge etc. And all I did is I right click this saved it to my desktop. You can see how quickly it was. And then I go back to my Photoshop and if I want to load those, I'm going to close that folder, I'll load those actions, I click this button here and down here you can't see it, it's off camera here. It says load actions and on my desktop I do Sue's action set and it opens up this whole big folder here. And let's say I want to run lightning. I click that, click play and I have my lightning here and I can actually use my eraser tool here and erase some of the lightning over my eagle alright so that's an effect that I just wouldn't have had otherwise um, the other thing is like you know um, bumpy text if I click that and click play you'll see that it wants me to select an active layer and you know change my foreground color and you know go ahead and do that and I click continue and it kind of messed up my picture because I didn't select a text layer um, along those same lines, if I go to text effects and I do something like die cut and then I type in some text on my picture here, I'll do like, um, let's see where my, where my text is here. Let me go ahead and play it and we'll see what happens. I don't think it selected anything. Hmm. Okay, my text layer is under the other layer. I'm stupid. Alright, so if I have my text layer on top here, and I go ahead and I run my die cut, so what that does is it does this nice little cutout, and you can see that it basically adds its own layer, and it does some really nice effects. Now, along these same lines, I've got all these other actions um, in my folder here that I've downloaded. So if I want to import a new action here. I'm going to just go load actions, go into the actions folder, and then something complicated like, um, well, let's do mummy. You see how it's only got two actions in here, and I don't have anything open, but I'm going to click play. And it types in some test, get a te text, and if I type in something else like that, what's going to happen when I click play is it's going to start running through these bazillion 
steps. So I'm going to click play just so we can see what happens. Okay. Now, basically, what it's doing is it's running through all these steps, and you won't know it because most of the action doesn't appear until the very end. Um, what I like about this effect is that in order to get this to work, you would have to do all of these steps yourself, and like I said, there's a lot of them. And this, in this case, it basically makes the text look like it's wrapped in mummy bandages, and it's useful for things like Halloween or whatever. Um, there's some other neat ones where, you know, like an X-Files test, text um, effect which makes it look like the lights coming out from behind the text um, so I would basically what I like to do is just download actions experiment sometimes they run where you have to have the text there first sometimes no matter what you have there first it pops up with a window and asks you to type things in etc so here is an example of that now you see that it adds a background and it adds a text layer now this layer here is nice because I can drag that and move it to another picture. I can't change it now f to different um, words because it's already been you know, almost rendered for lack of a better term. But you can get an idea of how effective this can be and how much time this can save you. There's other things in here too, like if you want to add a texture to something such as parchment paper, click play. And now my background is parchment. Okay. Anyway, um, if you have any questions, give me an email. Um, have any more suggestions, shoot those off too. Thank you very much, and I hope you have fun with this.